Hey everyone, welcome back to another AI conversation. And today I'm joined by Miss Sandy Laugico, who some of you might have actually know already. You know, she's quite popular on social media, does a lot of posts in various groups. But I'll let her introduce herself now. So hi Sandy, welcome to AI Conversations. Hello, Doc. Um, it's my pleasure to be um uh doing this podcast and conversation with you. So um to introduce myself, I'm a career shifter. Uh I would like to consider myself as a career shifter, although medyo malapit na yung uh yung uh regional or profession ko uh before I transitioned to data science since uh the first time I actually joined yung tech communities, it's with the tech career shifter group with um Kuya Dev. So I'm an electronics engineer by profession. So I graduated uh, back in 2017. And then at the time, I wasn't quite sure of what specific track I should pursue. So that's when I decided to uh, pursue a graduate study. And then I had this opportunity to um, have a full scholarship to uh, specialize, hopefully, sa electronics engineering so i took up msece and then it ended up that it was actually the period when i was introduced to artificial intelligence uh, data science in general and then after two years uh, after i graduated that's when i decided to work as a data scientist it's actually my uh, first industry job uh, because uh, when I graduated in 2017, uh, I taught in the academe instead of practicing engineering. Um, so yeah, um, it has been a journey from from there, uh, from data science. Ngayon, I'm uh, veering, veering towards um, focusing on data engineering and ML ops because uh, they are quite interesting to me as of the moment. Okay, we have a lot to talk about if that's the case now. But okay, let's start from the beginning. Uh, as I meant, I was mentioning to you offline, uh, yung shift from data science to data engineering is actually proving to be a popular option more and more. I've heard more than a couple of people start out that way. So I don't know if could you describe that parang idea? Like, okay, number one, what got you started in data science to begin with, and then what was at some point, there was probably this change of heart, you know, uh, which now has led you down the the engineer path, and then eventually DevOps, uh, or yung mga hybrid ML ops, AI ops, mga ganyan, no? So, could you could you talk through that? Like first, how why data science, and then later, uh, what made you decide to make the shift? So, yung first yeah, parang kumbaga introduction ko to the world of data is uh, with data science talaga back in 2019 when I was pursuing my graduate studies where I had subjects about, um, for example, neural networks, um, the traditional machine learning such as yung logistic regression, uh, support vector machines. And then I've had several boot camps on data science and machine learning in particular, but um, it's mostly on development but not uh, deployment. And then in 2020, I came across the famous article, as I think most of us know, yung, uh the sexiest job of the 21st century so uh, that really got me into data science i would say na parang accident yung career shifting ko since uh, i was really hoping to specialize at that time sa electronics engineering and then i ended up with that article and with subjects that relate to um artificial intelligence so wala talaga akong idea before na it's a career entirely so nung nagtake ako ng mga courses online in 2020, uh, that's when I realized na meron palang role na data scientist. At that time, I don't even know that uh, data analyst uh, also is a uh, profession at the time. So, parang, um, what got me into data science, I really find the parang use of these algorithms uh, very powerful. Like, it can really provide um insights from the data that um uh that we have so yung uh, thesis ko before was um actually we capture images of lettuce scraps and then from there we use uh machine learning models and deep learning networks in order to um like predict or in more jargon or more layman term is um 
kumbaga i may measure niya yung yung attributes nung lettuce leaves like um yung perimeter niya yung area niya and then from there it is capable of um producing a prediction or a measurement of those um attributes and then from there um we have these control systems of uh that is capable of uh parang mag-adjust to what the lettuce crop needs based on that uh, output um predictions from the from the network that we built and then yeah so what got me into data engineering after working as a data scientist for um i think it happened uh, around one year and a half so uh i was new to a company so i was hired as a data science lead and then nagkat on na uh, uh wala ata silang hinar na data engineering lead and then ginawa kong OIC so uh, I was responsible to lead also the data engineers and analysts and at that time hindi pa ganon uh, yung knowledge ko about data engineering so when I'm given a responsibility uh, it's in my nature na uh, I want to be able to uh, really do that responsibility so at the time uh, aside from my on onboarding and doing my responsibilities as a data science lead, I was also learning um, data engineering. And then at that time, uh, I came across this uh, Fundamentals of in Engineering, Data Engineering book by Joe Rice and Matt Hoosley, where in dun ko narinig yung term na recovering data scientists. So they considered themselves as recovering data scientists. So parang it's an inside joke. Uh, nila uh, Joe Rice, wherein uh, they, they consider themselves as data, uh, recovering data scientists because um, a lot of practitioners, especially data scientists, since yun yung parang pinaka unang profession sa world of data, um, would go straight ahead to machine learning and would uh, parang i-disregard na nila yung mga methodologies na just because they're not machine learning. So parang ang advocacy nila is more on focusing on the basics first, um, building the infrastructure first, uh, defining the data first, understanding uh, yung, yung business processes, and then yung, um, yung rules. Uh, going back to the fun fundamentals before um, going to... Uh, Yung, yung the latter stage of the um analytics wherein nandun na yung predictive at saka prescriptive kasi parang na experience nila is maraming data science projects na nagfe-fail because they skip like um yung pag pag ensure ng uh, foundations ng data um and then they would just go straight ahead with the what they call as yung parang future sure looking methodologies instead of uh, focusing on the backward looking uh, methodologies such as, as the descriptive stage and the diagnostic stage of analytics or in kapag ka, for example na focus ka dun sa forward looking nandiyan na yung mga machine learning ang mangyayari ang tendency like in the um, academic setup is that nagiging model centric uh, rather than data centric and when you're model centric kahit anong fine tune mo diyan with the, your hyper parameters if hindi okay yung yung data uh, hindi na magi-increase yung accuracy niya but where uh, when you troubleshoot it uh, kumbaga or you lay down the foundation at the basics pa lang of the data then uh more likely na mas mapapataas mo pa yung accuracy or yung, yung performance in general ng uh, models. Yeah, there's a lot of lot to unpack no, sa sinabi mo. The first thing I want to maybe set, kasi uh, I've interviewed maybe a couple of data engineers already before. No? And I think, like in general, even within the data community, if you're not a data engineer, it, it's quite mysterious what data engineers do. Uh, so could you start with that? Like, I mean, in essence, what tasks or roles define a data engineer that you wouldn't normally expect from an analyst or a data science uh, practitioner? At the core of uh, data engineering function, I think uh, 
ginagawa nila is uh, focusing on developing ETLs, uh, extract, transform, load, being able to extract data from different sources, uh, including pwedeng from API, web scraping, or edge computing devices, and then transform them to a data that is ready to consume by um, downstream data consumers such as data analysts, data scientists, and uh, machine learning engineers, and then to load them to the appropriate types of um, storage, uh, whether it's a data warehouse or a data lake and such. Uh, at the core, yun yung uh, kumbaga, fundamental na function ng data engineer. And then also work on uh, uh, being able to orchestrate or automate or streamline the process of um, getting the data from one point to another. So a lot of it is, in a way, before the data analyst or data scientist does their work. Does the data engineer have a role to play after the data science or the data analyst has done, you know, their 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 work on that data? One interesting thing I would consider is that um, yung data engineering, uh, some would say that undercurrent nila yung ML ops. So if there are no machine learning engineers, I think data engineers can uh, work on uh, ML ops and deploy models into production because yung tasks and yung um, how they do the extract, transform, load, and orchestration, very similar kung paano i-deploy yung model into production. Siguro ang wala lang uh, parang ex uh, according to the expectation of skills ng data engineering is yung actual model development which can be done by uh, data scientists but um, if for example we have only data engineers and scientists in a team then I think um, once the data scientists develop the model then they can um, yung data engineers can uh, transform the notebooks into scripts uh, following modular programming and software engineering principles. And then from there, they can build the machine learning pipeline similar to how they build the extract transform load pipeline. So I think very similar yung steps uh, nung, nung MLEs and data engineers. So in terms of background, would it, like in your case, you're an electrical engineer, no? Um, does it work better if a data engineer comes from kind of a tech or, or STEM background from your perspective? Uh, from my perspective, yung pinaka madadalian to uh, shift into data engineer would be a software engineer or probably a data analyst who has an analytics engineering experience. But I think yeah, uh, software engineers are uh, parang most capable to transfer to or shift into data engineering fast because I think it's more of a niche um, or kumbaga, a specialization of software engineering. Kumbaga, you have already your basic software know-how. No? You can write code, you can do functional programming, maybe occasionally object-oriented programming, databases, yeah. When you mention ETL, are you referring to ETL tools or is this confined to parang uh, code-based ETL? Is there is there a difference or a preference in your view? Um, uh, ako kasi particularly hindi ako parang fan ng tools. Kumbaga, I focus on the parang basic principles of how to do extract, transform, load, whatever tool um to use or ano man yung gamit ng company or client. So, I don't have really particular tools. Uh, but, um, like, for example, you can do simple extract transform load just purely using uh, Python. Uh, for example, using uh, several uh, frameworks like Scrapey to um, web scrape and then transform them using pandas and then loading them to uh, a data database like MySQL. So I think with that, um, with that uh, fundamental knowledge, uh, pwede mo na siyang i-scale up to um, other, uh, or kumbaga, integrating them to other tools like um, orchestrating now these ETL tools with 
um, Airflow, for example, or uh, Prefect or NiFi uh, in order for this to be um, streamlined. And then there's also a trending shift to um, ELT, wherein although yung process are the same, but there is a reorder in the transform and load, wherein mauna yung load instead of the transform. And I think um, this is more of a scalable um, solution rather than the ETL because um, mas maganda na yung parang there are less transformations in the pipeline uh, dahil yung transformation, it can cause um, data losses. Yeah, I mean, let's get into the weeds of it. No? The difference between ETL and ELT. You said the loading happens first. Do you have a view on when do you need to do that? And isn't data already loaded somewhere, even in ETL? Parang ano lang, conceptually, would you differentiate the two and then when would you prefer one over the other? I think yung, uh, yung ETL na loaded na somewhere, uh, I think meron silang tinatawag na storage. It can be like an S3. Although it can, it's already considered a data lake. Uh, in uh i would say na at merong parang uh, considerations dun sa sa storage na yun na hindi siloed siya hindi siya accessible to to other para stakeholders while in ELT yung yung first loading niya can already be considered as sub service analytics so i think that's one use case for for ELT and then for the ETL more on uh, traditional uh, use cases such as, for example, uh, working on a customized dashboard for a marketing team, for example. So in, in your experience, what are some common problems or situations that data engineers are really good at solving, you know, if in like in a typical company or a business, maybe in your jobs, uh, what constitutes like a data engineering parang problem uh, to, to solve? I think uh, one would be um, yung challenge where um, yung pag access ng data because if data analyst or data scientist would do that, uh, for example, sa data analyst, uh, as much as possible, iwan, iwasan nila yung databases. I had this experience before um, as a freelancer wherein uh, yung client iniiwasan yung paggamit uh, na, for example, big query. So, uh, as much as pos possible, spreadsheets lang yung kumbaga warehouse nung ano non data and yung worst pa is yung api diretso dun sa dashboard uh, and then ang problem nun is kapag lumaki yung data um napakahirap niyang i-manage and that's one thing that uh data engineers are good at uh solving since um they can uh design schemas for databases and then uh actually use um yung appropriate storage and then from there uh, i-access siya ng data ana uh, data analyst and data scientist I have a question so and I I can relate to that no I've met people who don't like the back end component of the data engineering part although the whole thing technically is a back end job pero parang yung equivalent of the front end would be the the modeling, the reports, the analysis because that's what customers deal with. The back end is yan, yung mga data lakes, data warehouses, databases. I'm wondering why why do you think analysts or data scientists are averse to the kind of that data layer? So how do they achieve it? Do they also do it in the front, no? Maybe they use Python up front. So, uh, one it... reason as ah, no, go ahead. Uh one reason probably is the data analysts and data scientists are not really skilled with uh working with databases, I would say. Siguro na nila lang yon once they are already in the company, but they are not trained uh not trained before uh they got into 
those roles. So, kasi karamihan ng mga parang bootcamps focus sila sa data science life cycle na we're in um, understanding the business and then using uh, Python frameworks to perform yung um, extraction. Siguro yung extraction nasa notebook lang din ginagawa and then um, transformation and then uh, model de- uh, feature engineering, model development and uh, that's it. And then for data analyst more on focus sa uh, um, dashboarding. So, uh, I think um, data analysts and data scientists in general are not uh, really equipped with uh, working on the back end since uh, yun yung training na uh, na binigay for uh, for them. So, more on focus dun sa four stages of analytics from descriptive, diagnostics, uh, predictive, and uh, prescriptive, but not really uh, on the tools to use for actually streamlining uh yung data processes from from the sources to the destination so in terms of kanina you were talking about the shift right? and you were exposed to data analysis first so when did that parang change in mindset occur no parang for you or how did it develop aside from parang kinailangan ko dun sa uh nabigyan ako ng responsibility to lead data engineers i feel like although they would say that more visual yung uh data analysis and data scientists and then back end yung data engineering i feel like some as uh, someone with an engineering background i think mas may feedback yung output from data engineering like if it works or it it doesn't work uh for example sa data analyst and data scientist meron ngang charts, merong mga parang predictions, pero you wouldn't be able to say that they're correct right away. Siguro doon sa um, backward-looking methodology such as descriptive um, diagnostics, uh, may output ka from that. But yung forward-looking na methodologies like machine learning, yes, meron kang prediction, yes, they are probably uh, performing well yung models. However, parang yung yung feedback that what you did was actually right would take some time. Uh, for example, uh, from this uh, output of the model that we have, we recommend this. And then from that recommendation, you're not even sure if tama ba yung recommendations mo. And it would take some time uh, after uh, mag-take action pa yung mga stakeholders, uh, doon mo pala malalaman yung uh, feedback if um, what you have produced from your um experimentations and the entire data science life life cycle is actually correct uh, on the other hand in data engineering um makikita mo agad na nagwo-work yung uh pag streamline mo ng um, data from the source to the destination you know it works when for example yung last stage is to load uh the data on a daily basis and uh incremental na uh technique so you would know na nagwo-work yung 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 pipeline and then uh, as uh, data engineer you, you can also track or, uh, through yung tools like for example um prefect you can see kaagad if may nagfe-fail for example dun sa sa pipeline so may immediate feedback and i think something na nag uh, i got interested into because as an electronics engineer parang uh very important sa akin yung immediate feedback para kasi yun yung I find uh, something enjoyable uh, personally. So in a way, parang what you're talking about is this concept of parang testability. You want to be able to test if this thing works. Uh, na, to be fair, meron namang ganun kahit pa paano in the you know, analytical modeling front. Pero that test is parang like a preliminary test lang. Eh. You test if the fit of the model works on new data. Pero yun na nga, tama ka. It won't be until probably months later where you can now have a validation t- data set and then check if the predictions made by the model match the the kind of the profile or the intent that you had you know, for developing the model. Okay. Um, How did you get started? So when you made the shift or in the process of shifting, so how does one learn? Because I... I don't know if I missed any, but I don't think there are many or if at all data engineering courses in school or baka ngayon meron na. So, 
how did you go about parang learning that uh parang body of knowledge uh last year uh, i started with data camp so meron silang data engineering uh specialization track and then i also read the fundamentals of data engineering and then um uh, from there i just take on some uh youtube tutorials and then do projects here and there uh right now i'm taking yung uh Coursera IBM data engineering because uh no 2020 yun din yung data science course na kinuha ko uh, but uh specialized for data science and this one is relatively newer uh for data engineering naman and i find it uh more uh, appropriate for me or parang do sa learning style ko since uh it uh it discusses about theories concepts tools to use and then after that may mga lab practices and then also a capstone project before you complete a course in that special specialization And then what about the you mentioned earlier Python no, as a big tool did you also start with that by default because you're already a Python user or did you have to learn Python and then what do you say about say there are some major older no but they're still around mga classical ETL tools like mga Informatica mga Pentaho mga Talend and and they're quite quite used quite heavily by the enterprise clients no so uh, any mga views mo about the tools to get started um i started with matlab actually in uh, in for my grad school so doon ako nang na-introduce sa uh, ai machine learning and then uh, for my thesis i started working with python but pero at that time uh diretso agad ako sa mga frameworks for uh, data science which uh, some of them can be used for data engineering like pandas uh, but not for uh yung big data uh so without understanding back then yung OOP so i just accepted yung how frameworks work so tinanggap ko lang na for example we just need to import these packages and then from there always working on yung yung uh structure na um, parang object that method parameter argument so once parang naintindihan ko yun um Parang inaccept ko na lang kahit hindi ko naiintindihan yung OOP at the time. And then, um, from there, yung shift to Python for data engineering, uh, I think mas mahirap siya for data engineering rather than uh, for data science. Kasi for data science, uh, I think meron naman sila pwedeng uh, pareho, parehong scripts lang. But um, I think uh, for data engineering, it's important to understand how to uh, do modular programming and then um, uh, use uh, software engineering principles rather than yung parang notebook-based kind of uh, Python. Uh, for the other tools, uh, I've mostly only worked with open source tools, so I haven't worked with uh, yung mga proprietary uh, that you've mentioned earlier. Um, talk a bit about software development principles that you know non data engineers, kunyari mga data analysts don't know about. No, I mean everyone uses code at some point, like create levels, uh, you know, um, for games or you know, uh, analyzing data sets. So, in the case of yeah, no the core differences between data analysis and data engineering what are some of those principles that you need to parang bear in mind um i would say yung uh una pa lang is yung pagpackage ng uh, for example sets of functions that um you use uh, and i think uh, personally before nung hindi pa ako nag uh, transition into data engineering uh, very procedural yung uh, scripts ko uh, dun sa notebook. So, I don't even use functions most of the time. Uh, parang kubaga pinaka advanced na dun is for loop and then just use another framework. Framework, uh, for example, from Pandas to TensorFlow. But I'm not even defining functions. So, I think being able to use function to avoid uh, yung repeating yourself 
So, yun nga, yung dry principles sa software engineering. Don't repeat yourself. So, if you can utilize a function to um, use it several times in your scripts, then uh, yun yung first step. And then once you have multiple functions, um, you can package them into a module that you can call uh, into another script. So, mostly for modular programming na to and I haven't done it in notebooks. I'm not sure if it can be done. Kasi sa isang notebook, parang isang environment ka lang. But uh, for example, when you're working on a specific IDE, for example, VS Code, so meron kang parang uh, project structure na nandun yung mga SRC files mo wherein um, meron kang different um, sets of modules for different um, uh, functions. Like meron kang for extract, uh, module, transform uh, module, and then load module. And then, dun sa parang main app mo, uh, dun mo palang sila iko call invoke, and then from there, um, run it. So, I think uh, yun yung mga important to uh, to also learn if, for example, uh, transitioning into data engineering. And of course, yung um, object oriented programming. Yeah, so I think that's very interesting. Because you know, the way a typical data analyst or data scientist might write write code will be process uh, centric. Okay, cleanse the data, load the data, perform linear regression, get the R squared. While in data engineering, it seems to be an orchestration of many processes and tools. No, okay. Um, maybe let's change direction a bit. No, um, what is a, an example of a success parang story from a data engineering standpoint? I mean, what pain points will a client thank you for or means uh, parang either either you're thankless or they'll say, ah, okay, ganun pala yun. I mean, it's something that's not parang immediately obvious to them. No, How do you deal with that? Um, I would say yung uh, if you help the client, uh, reduce yung possible uh, technical debt. Because for me, if, uh, for example, ako yung company or client and then I will hire someone. The truth is, it's really hard to decide whether to hire a data analyst or a data engineer first. Para siyang uh, chicken and egg problem. Eh, wherein somehow, data analysts, I think it's, they are more directly closer to providing value to a company like for example uh they need to have a reports on how much sales they had last month so i think that's very valuable however if uh hindi sila mag hire ng data engineer malaki yung probability that they will uh, suffer from technical debt so i think uh a good measurement for uh a data engineer success is um to help those clients avoid yung technical debt or at least, um, kung data analyst, kumbaga yung naunang i-hire, um, kumbaga makakatch up dun sa needs uh, nung, nung entire data team. Okay. Um, in terms of, you mentioned you are uh, managing or running or have run teams uh, of presumably mga similar engineers. No? What is a, a good way of managing the workload of a team. They say that's also notoriously a hard thing to achieve in technology. No? So someone like you has been able to do it. How would you, what would you recommend for teach, uh, for managers to start in when managing these technical teams? Hmm. Uh, I would say uh, first is to know, really know and listen to your team members. Uh, know their working style, um, know their capabilities, and then listen to um, whatever, for example, is yung uh, kumbaga mas prefer, preferred nilang gawin or ano yung uh, strengths nila. So I think that's the first thing to consider. And then second one would be to also work closely with uh, the project manager. 
So, uh, but of course, uh, it depends on the team structure. Many times that there are no uh, project managers, and then uh, sometimes I had to do project management myself, and then from there I distribute tasks depending on my team's um, capacity. So, although sometimes I hate time trackers, but uh, as a parang data driven person, uh, time trackers can really help in determining if your teams are overutilized or uh, they're spending too much time on a certain task and then um, hindi lang pala sila humihingi ng tulong for a problem that can be solved in like uh, a few minutes if there are parang senior who can uh, help them. So we can use data in order for us to parang determine what are the appropriate tasks and uh, the amount of tasks that we can um, assign uh, to our uh, team members. Okay, sige. Um, that's really good. Um, let's. You talked earlier about tools. What about platforms? Because I'm so sure, as a data engineer, you will encounter data stored in a particular cloud or database, etc. Could you quickly run down some ideas of you know where what kind of platforms you should understand by heart? so that later it becomes useful to your work in data engineering? Uh, I would say choose one for each of the, for example, data lake, uh, data warehouse, and then uh, data mart. So I've mostly worked before with um, AWS. So I would say um, tools like S3, uh, and then for data warehouse, I would probably veer away from AWS and say big query. Uh, those are just examples. So I think depende talaga yun sa company and your preference as a practitioner kung saan ka mag-focus muna. Pwedeng uh, AWS uh, for for data lake, for data warehouse such as yung Redshift. Uh, but uh, based lang sa experience ko, yun yung mga nagamit ko na before. So, um, yun yung mga parang I would suggest to to master and then also Postgre for databases. Yeah, Postgre is very, very useful. No? Okay, um, I realize we're almost at the hour. So, maybe a few more questions and then let's see if we can wrap up. No? In the practice of data engineering, one of the big bugbears is often the quality of the data or the you know uh reliability and you mentioned that you know there uh or rather more of it varies kasi context no so ikaw how often do you run into data quality challenges and have you ever been you know exposed to the need to incorporate that into your pipeline parang data cleansing pipeline no i, I don't have the term MDM is still used these days or that we used to call it uh you know sales quality mga ganyan kasi nga there, at some point the company moves from a totally analog to a totally digital enterprise dumami bigla yung data nila pero they won't necessarily hide or uh broad yung mga yung mga data engineers they don't they don't kaya nga I'm happy that we have a community you know uh, that we have set up by Mike and company. I don't know, kasama ka rin yata dun, uh, That, you know, allows people to start comparing notes. So, you know, any thoughts on that? Like, what are the kind of those uh, uh, ideas or topics uh, related to the practice of the ETL itself, like data quality and reliability, etc.? Uh, when it comes to data cleaning, for example, uh, in my experience, mas parang uh, responsibility siya ng uh, data scientist or yun nga, baka dahil nga sa term na recovering data scientist, wherein parang pag sa data engineering, ang data cleaning na pinapractice is more on uh, just ensuring na parang walang missing values or kung meron man, uh, it's naturally or parang it's expected to have missing values. And then more on parang mga parang normalization wherein uh, you ensure lang na na within the same magnitude for example yung yung data and then uh anything that deals with joining of tables uh 
Uh, pero for example, if there are specific techniques with data cleaning, I'm not sure if may na-encounter na akong course wherein uh, dinidiscuss yung parang different techniques. You can even use machine learning to impute uh, for missing values. And I've done it uh, as a data scientist rather than a uh, data engineer. So uh, I think yung sa data engineering side na cleaning is more on ensuring that it's aligned to um, sa business rules. Like for example, uh, merong duplicated data. So that's one thing to consider if the data is valid. But uh, according to the business rules, it makes sense that the data is duplicated. Like for example, you have, uh, you're wondering probably why you have multiple um, order ID. But uh, with the business process, uh, parang na-validate mo na they have multiple order ID because in uh, that's actually a table for products wherein uh, one order can have probably multiple products. So uh, I think yung uh, aligning with the business uh, process is one thing to really consider uh, in ensuring uh, data validity and quality. Pero pagdating dun sa parang pag-handle, for example, ng outliers, uh, uh, really determining what kinds of values to impute into those missing values, um, it's something that I have worked with uh, as a data scientist ra rather than as a data engineer. Um, those who want to follow your footsteps, what would be your top five or kahit top ten recommendation of where to get started in data engineering if you were to do it all over again, knowing in hindsight? Uh, this might be an unpopular opinion. And I'm not sure. Uh, pwedeng least likely, uh, least like opinion. Now, I would start as a data analyst. Uh, so I would start with following a roadmap uh, to be a data analyst, like understanding, uh, working with, uh, for example, spreadsheets, SQL, and then um, uh, working with Python and then dashboards. So the reason why is that I feel like uh, based on my experience, um, mas na build yung intuition ko when I freelance before as a data analyst a few months after I was already uh, a data scientist. I think mas na build yung intuition on how to properly handle data. And then from there, uh, it also depends on the circumstances eh, kasi pwede namang mag-jump right ahead into data engineering kung hindi naman nagmamadali. But if for example nagmamadali and you need to like shift immediately, I would go to the data analyst route and then that's when while I'm working, I'll uh, study data engineering. I actually built a roadmap for that, which starts with uh, picking a language for one of the three purposes. One is for programming language, so, so pwedeng mamili between uh, Python, uh, Scala, Java. For shell and scripting, usually bash yung gamit, but uh, other options are Perl and Ruby. And then uh, another one, of course, would be uh, querying databases such as yung pinaka popular of course is yung SQL but uh, for unstructured data they can also consider yung um, Cypher which queries um, for example graph databases and then from there um, maybe follow or pick a whole parang course na kung saan for every um, parang small topic na matapos mo you create projects and for me what works is yung um, IBM data engineering course from Coursera so it's free uh, via financial aid so uh, matututo ka na uh, uh, from a free um, free resource and then for every course na matapos mo bukod sa uh, although I don't really believe in certificates as parang way to guarantee uh, jobs but um for you to get those certificates, actually, you need to complete a project. So I think uh, that's a win-win uh, parang course wherein you already apply what you learn and then you also get like proofs of uh, that you have learned uh, those topics. Okay. I think we're nearly out of time now. So any, you know, anything you're looking forward to in data engineering in, in the next few months? Uh, I don't know, is it more popularity or new trends, new tools? And then we barely talked about AI, no? which sometimes happens. No? Uh, any thoughts about AI and data engineering? Are they 
Yeah, sige. Sige, na siguro na idugtong ko na lang din. Uh, what I'm excited about data engineering, actually, uh, within the next few years, I think the demand would continue to rise kasi parang ngayon pa lang nakilala yung data engineering. And after uh, the, for example, the foundations has been set, I think uh, one of the emerging roles right now is machine learning engineering. But I would say na pag, uh, if I look at, for example, into LinkedIn, hindi pa ganun karami opportunities uh, available unlike with data engineering right now. And, and that's why I'm also transitioning into data engineering because uh, I feel like I'll be a better machine learning engineer if I, I shift into data engineer after data science because yung uh, merging, actually merging ng data engineering and data science is actually machine learning engineering. But I think um, people can go straight to machine learning engineering but uh, I think it's just my parang mindset na siguro more of a parang engineering uh, characteristic din to na I need to understand the behind the scenes rather than uh, skipping ahead and for me, parang hintayin ko siya or kumbaga sasabayan ko yung yung rise na lang ng uh, ML engineers and AI engineers uh, in the coming years and my general thoughts of AI um, I think um, what we have talked offline earlier nandun ako sa Parang I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I feel like um, there are other things that um, most businesses are trying to focus to right now, like uh, going back to the data science hierarchy of needs. Parang inuuna muna yung foundations, although they can jump right ahead to AI. Um, it's, I think, from the recent months na I've also been uh, trying to catch up with these advancements. So, parang there is, parang two sides eh. Uh, first one is parang hindi ka makaka uh, advance if you don't use AI immediately. And then there's another side wherein build up the foundations first before you go straight to to AI. So, I have this excitement but um, also there is this um, parang need for me to to start with the basics and then build that basics for me to be a better uh, practitioner for the most advanced uh, stuff. All right. I think that's pretty much a, uh, we have to save some for the next episode. No? So, but I, I, I love that you're chock full of insights about your shift, the reasons for it. And now you're just spilling out as many tips as possible. So I hope people will pick that up. So, sige, um, First, I want to thank you, Sandy, for taking time to attend the air conversation. You know, one hour can go by very quickly, especially if you're tackling a lot of content. And then also, I echo your belief that hopefully by airing these, uh, you know, episodes, we get more people interested in the field. It's interesting also that you suggested being a shifter. Parang engineering is always a shift, at least in this case. You start as an analyst, learn the data, learn the user. Then it turn over mo niya sa ano sa sa engineer no uh, to do the rest. So thanks a lot, Sandy, and I hope to catch you on the next AI conversation. And yeah, uh, mabuhay yung mga data engineers. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. <laughs>